Hey there, everybody. It's uh, Chapin with the Flying Sea Farm here. I've got uh, little Rian, who is our coming three-year-old thoroughbred that we picked up last year. Uh, he's been used for a few different uh, lessons, and we've done a little bit of work with him ourselves. Um, he's had one ride so far. He's been saddled maybe a half dozen times. We're just working him, uh, working him in as we can, and uh, he's about ready to start start a little harder work now. So today will be his second ride. Uh, yesterday, pretty non-eventful. Got a walk and a trot right here in the arena. Didn't have to have anybody push us around. He's a real willing uh, little partner to work with. And uh, so we'll try to keep today just as boring as yesterday was. Uh, if, if it's a non-event for him, it's a non-event for us, and it's good for everybody. So we've already got him saddled up. And the first thing I'm always going to do with any, any young colt especially, but really any horse, I'll bring in the arena to work. It's just start getting their feet to move and getting their brain to work just a little bit. There we go. I'm just working them on a 12 foot lunge line right now. And really this first few minutes in the arena on the lunge line is going to set the tone for the rest of the day. You can keep yourself from getting in an argument with your horse in the first couple of minutes. Generally sets the rest of your day up a little bit better. And the big mistake I see, well I say it's a mistake, that I see a lot of people make when they start working their horse, when they first walk into the round pen or the round corral or the arena or wherever, is they come in, they pick a direction, they lunge their horse for 10 minutes, turn them one time, lunge him for 10 minutes in the other direction and say, yep, he's warmed up. And while that's not technically untrue, his muscles are warmed up, his brain is not warmed up. So we want to treat this first couple of minutes as a warm up for both his body and his brain. So I'm going to ask his feet to move in a lot of different directions, not putting a lot of stress on him. I'm just going to make him think about everything that we do. And I never go more than just a couple of laps in any one direction. So I'll learn to go right back to thinking what the next thing is. And you'll see in a second, he'll start anticipating every time I stop him. And oh man, we're going to turn the other way. And that's when I'll move on to the next exercise. So right there, I've been stopping him about every lap and a half. So he stopped and said, hey man, I think it's about time. I'll just push him on, ask him for another lap or so, and then stop him. See if we can get him to follow just a little. That's close enough, bud. There. We'll work on yielding the fore and the hind quarters a little bit. You see, he kind of wants to walk forward, so I'll pick him up. There we go. Thank you. Nope. He's walking forward, so I'm going to pick up on him just a little bit. Just ask that hind end to disengage. There. Thank you, buddy. We'll just rub all over him. We've done lots of desensitizing with him in previous sessions. Not much bothers this little guy. The day we picked him up, he had a tendency to kick and anything around his back legs, but that seemed like a, a one-off because it was an exciting day for him. Hey. Make sure nothing in our saddle bothers them anymore. Thank you. And the more I can work this little horse and never actually have to pick up on him or make contact with his face with the halter, the better. So you'll see me doing a lot of work, just moving around him and asking him to come with me or to me, just using body language. And we'll actually turn that into almost a little bit of a release when we're doing work later, just to create a little more willing partner. So we're going to work our little bridge here, and you can see it's a really small bridge. Thank you, bud. 
that you actually have to work your horse to aim at the bridge. It's not big enough that you can just put it in a corner and force them across it. You actually got to get your horse to ask across it every time. You can see he kind of gave me some little cheat steps. Got two feet on, then decided he didn't want to be on it anymore and stepped off to the side. There. And this is what I mean by getting your horse's brain to work. There we go, bud. I'm going to ask him forward another step, see if I can get a back foot. You can see that bridge is just big enough for all four of his feet, if we can get all four. Thank you. So it's not a fear issue that we're working through, like a lot of obstacles right now. I'm working through asking my horse to do something that's not real natural to him. Thank you, buddy. So while he's up on the bridge, I'll give him his head there. Now he decided to get all four feet on his own. Now we get to relax for a second. And we'll walk back off, like I said, after we get done with something. His release is getting to be with me. Thank you, bud. Go back, rub on him a little more. And go back to the bridge one more time. See if we can get it from the other direction. Thank you, buddy. So now he's starting to pick it up. There. You got all four feet, both directions. And as you can see, we've done a lot of work just with sending this little guy across different obstacles out in the pasture, in the arena, cross poles, bridges, everything else in the world. Thank you. And it really pays off because I can point my horse at something and ask him to try it. There. And get the bridge back out of the way. See if my horse will ground time the process. But there. He's nice and relaxed. We'll move all around him. Check our saddle one more time and then step on. <clears throat> Snug up my cinch just a hair. And we already did all the, the first rod, uh, step up, step down, step up, step down. So today, I'm going to treat it more like any other rod. And we're just going to step right up and take a seat. You can see he's walking off, so we'll just ask him just to stand with us for a second. Thank you, buddy. Where are you going? And he's not bothered walking off. He just knows it's time to go to work. I'm just picking up with one rein because that's all I've got. There. Till he stops. I'm walking off again. He just wants to go check out everything in the arena, so I'm going to pick up with one rein, work on a little flexion. There. One more time. We'll see if we can figure out how to stand still. Thank you. I know. He says, man, I'm built for the racetrack. I'm not built for the standing still nonsense. I'm just moving around on him. He's taking everything right now as a, a sign that we need to go. So we're just going to work on that for a second. In a little while, you'll be ready to stand still. I promise. All right, now we'll move him out. Going to point with that rein, not pull his head around too hard. And give him just a little flutter from my legs. And right now we're just going to walk 
and let him see whatever he wants to see and go wherever he wants to go in the arena. Continuing to figure out his balance with a person on top of him. And just get a lay of the land. He's got his head nice and low. He's checking out all the poles, tarps, the dog. Not a worry in the world. We'll see if we can work on just a little bit of direction. And I'm riding just in a rope halter without my reins tied today. Because today is primarily going to be about figuring out go and stop. I'll do just a little softening of the nose to make sure I can stop him if something goes wrong. But for the most part, I want less things for me to worry about. We'll focus on one thing at a time and do that one thing really well. You feel better? Mm. So now I'll walk off again. And just let him explore his little world here. And in a few days, we ride him outside of the arena. We take him off out in the pasture. We'll do the same thing in the pasture. Just let him walk and explore for a little while. Starting to get a little sticky over by the gate like every other horse in the world. We'll just push him on. For the most part, he's more than happy to go. See if we can soften him up just a little bit. Pick another direction. There we go. Never more than just the weight of the lead rope on his nose right there. He did really well. And see if we can get a little stop out of them. So instead of leading that lead rope them around, I'm going to bring it a little more straight back like you traditionally would. Sit my body back. Just like I'm stopping a horse that knows how to stop. Thank you, buddy. And because we've taught this horse a little bit of flexion in the beginning, I'll bring his nose around. And soften right up in my hands. Thank you. Off we go to the races again. We'll see if he'll stop one more time. Like I said, today we're just working on the gas and the brake. Better. Thank you, bud. There, he's licking and chewing, which traditionally in horse language means he just learned something. And you can see now he's standing still. We'll let him stand for just a second. He's looking for all his friends out in the pasture. I oh, know. All right, buddy, let's move out again. I'm going to lead with that rain and just a little flutter on my legs. He's got plenty of go. So it really doesn't take much. I'm not sure my mic's still recording. There it is. We're going to start asking him for the trot here. So I'm going to get him pointed back around in a direction. We've got a little bit of room and we're not going to get him into a jam. And now I'm just going to ride up my seat just like I would with a horse that knew what they were doing. There. And just a little tickle of the legs. And we're off. He's figuring out his speed, figuring out his balance. You can see his head's up. His ears are forward. He's looking at the world around him. We're trying to figure out a speed and a balance here. Go, bud. Now I'll ask him to stop. I'm just going to sit and relax. Ease back on our one rein. There. There. Thank you, bud. 
We're walking off again on his own. So we're going to stop him again. So that's what we're working on today. Ask for the flex. Thank you. Good job, bud. Moving around. <clears throat> There you go. I'm going to do that one more time around to the left. Or at least we'll try to keep him to the left. We'll more or less just let him go wherever he wants to go. And he seems pretty happy just to go in one direction. He's not wandering around like some horses do. Pinballing off the walls. I'm going to get a little bit sticky in the corner where all of his buddies are. Just kissed him on one time. There. Through the corner where all my friends are. We'll try to stop there again. Good. Now he feels nice and free right here. I'm going to just bring him to a stop. I'm going to stop riding. Sit back. Relax. And nothing more than the weight of the lead rope. There. We got a nice little give and he's licking and chewing. He's going to walk off again. He's always on his own adventure. Give me the noggin, buddy. There. Better. We're going to try one more time. Pick him back up. And we're just going to hold that pressure. There. Good. All right. So we're going to switch sides so I can direct him a little more the other direction. Flip the lead rope over his nose. Make sure he flexes that side. You can see he's nice and soft. I'm going to point his nose, a little flutter in my legs, and we'll walk off. Keeping myself relaxed, moving around in the saddle. Making sure I keep myself from getting scared, because if I'm scared, he's going to be scared, then we're both going to be scared, and that just doesn't end well for anybody. So if I can, I'm going to keep him moving around to the right because we do want to pick a direction right now. So if he circles in close, I'll just keep pointing him around. You can see he sees his buddies, or here's his buddies over in the pasture all playing together. And he's doing a good job for us, staying right here with us. He's getting a little sticky, so we're going to go ahead and ask for that trot. Get him pointed back down the rail or down the arena. A little tickle with my feet. You can see he's a little sticky here. So we'll move him out. And he should open right back up. He was starting to just get a little stagnant. We're going to put him back to work. He's got a little better rate to his trot around to the right. A little slower, a little more control. There. But he's not quite as soft on this side, so that's something we'll work on later. Softening up his midsection. Oh, I'm going to sit and relax, pick up, never much more than the weight of the lead rope, you'll never get a horse any softer than what you can ask him. 
I'm going to wait for that nose to give just a little. There. Thank you. Good job, bud. Move around, rub around. Reward him for being such a good boy. There, bud. All right, we'll try one more time off to the right. We got a nice little walk going here. I'm going to move my hands forward, sit up in my seat, start tickling with my feet just like I was riding a horse who knew what he was doing. And it pops right up for us. This little horse has got plenty of go. And knock on wood, not too terribly much. Because that could be a bad thing too. I'm get a little sticky by the gate. Just push them on. There we go. And at this stage, I'll start adding just a little bit of a little bit of direction as we come to the corners, just to kind of start imprinting that. So where there's a natural barrier and I know he's gonna to have to turn, I'll add just a little bit of that inside rein, which is my only rein, and a little inside leg. Start easing that rib cage out. Oh, bud. There, now we'll sit and relax. Ask him to stop. Oh. There. Thank you, bud. There. Good. We've got the full stop, a little bit of flexion. I'll let him stand and relax for a minute. All right, so we've given him just a little bit of a break. I'll flip my lead back over him. We'll head back around to the left and we're gonna try to pick up a canner. So everything you've seen so far for the most part uh, was just a copy of what we did yesterday. Obviously we did all the first ride, up, down, up, down, up, down, getting the jitters out of both me and him yesterday. But we got up to a trot in both directions and we called it quits. Now that I'm just working horses in my, my off time and get to do it as we want to do it, don't have a 30-day limit on what I've got to get done with a horse for a client, it's nice just to be able to call it quits with a horse when you feel that they're in a good place and you're in a good place and you can just move on tomorrow. So traditionally, I would have ridden until we got walk, trot, canter, both directions on the first day. But he was really happy and really working well yesterday. So we just called it quits and let him think on it for the night. And hopefully that'll mean a little more solid horse in the end. We'll just pick him up and ask for the trot. A little forward in the saddle, move my hands forward, tickle the belly, and we're off. So I'll give him about one lap of the trot, just to work all the kinks out again. There we go. Start asking for that canner. Easy boy. Easy. There. Oh, he's a big mover. He's got a long stride. There. We'll just move with him. Help him find his balance. 
He was cross-firing a little there, it felt like. I think we're on the wrong lead. That's all right, we'll figure that out. He covers this whole arena in about three strides. There. Get him one more time. Now we got the correct lead. Don't think we're cross-firing. So we're gonna sit and ask him to stop. There, good job, bud. Good work. Oh, my hair's all messed up. You look all silly. That squared back away. There. It's relatively non-eventful. Flip our lead over. Get him pointed around to the right. Ask real light for that movement. And give him a second to kind of think on that. Just walk around, think about life for a minute. And we'll do the same thing around to the right. We're getting just a little sticky over here by the gate. He's wanting to keep himself here. Just go ahead and start moving out. Asking real light. Never get a horse any softer than what you can ask him. So if you start with a jerk or a kick, that's all you're ever going to get. Just bumping his nose around in the corner. A little inside leg helps soften his rib cage. Just starting to imprint that total body softness and control for later on. He's like, hey man, you're talking too much. All right, let's see if we can ask for it now. Just gonna ride forward, tickle the belly. He's gonna try the thousand mile an hour trot first. There we go. There. Thank you, buddy. It's a little sticky back in that corner. We got one more. There we go. A little more comfortable around this way. There. Now we're gonna sit, just gonna stop riding, sit back in my pockets, try to hold that $100 bill. Ask for that gift, there. Good job, bud. Excellent. And that's about as far as we're gonna take any movement today. We've got forward in all three gears. We've got a nice standstill. Pretty decent stop. I know quote unquote broke horses that won't stop that fast in an arena. So we'll call that a win for the day. And do just a little bit of flexion either way. Help keep that nose soft there. We don't want him overly soft or sensitive to the lead rope. Just want to make sure his mind's still right here with me. And I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm just asking with just the tips of my fingers. And if you can start with just that much and have the patience to help lead your horse through it or work your horse through it, you'll end up with a softer horse in the end and a more willing partner who actually understands what he's doing or she's doing. They're not just doing it because they're being told to. And switch sides. Thank you, bud. Very good. Now we've got the head nice and low. He's relaxed. His ears are forward. He's thinking about me and looking at everything else around him. 
So we're just going to quit them right there. We'll call it a day. We'll see you next time.